There's what they call emotional intelligence. There's what they call intelligence quotient. Intelligence quotient has to do with your IQ. All these formal education masters, they only are adding to your IQ. But IQ is just a small part of what you need to succeed in life. Spiritual intelligence. That's number three. Spiritual intelligence. So if you have first class in your BSc, in your MSc, and everything, at best, you've only gotten 25% of the intelligence you need to succeed. What I'm telling you is, the IQ, our education is insufficient. What we currently have and we consider as formal education is highly insufficient for you to be your best. Except you don't want to be your best. So I and a few of my coaches, we asked a few questions. What the formal school, that's why I put it in bracket, it's still school anyway, what it will not teach you. And these things are very critical. Number one, it won't teach you how to know yourself. Self-discovery. That's one of the number one things for success. How many of you know Messi? We just watched it. That was a man that has discovered himself. That's the number one thing for success. And I always tell, in the ratio of what makes what is more important, actually 80% of your success is harped on your emotional intelligence. IQ will only add 20%. So that's how big emotional intelligence contributes to success. How many of you have seen very wonderful players, but they will get angry and slap referee? Can that kind of person go far? He does not have emotional intelligence. That slapping of referee is lack of emotional intelligence. He didn't learn it. He didn't learn self-control. If you are a coach, you have a very good player, but he cannot control his emotions. There are critical games you don't want to field him. Because he will just do something that will make you have 10 men. He will do something that will give him red card. You know that you are in trouble. Can you see how powerful emotional intelligence is? Do you learn that in school? No, no. And these things can be learned. How to set and achieve goals is a skill. It doesn't just happen. These are some of the things we do in NWN. So we sat down to look for those things that people need to succeed. They cannot fully get it in school. They cannot fully get it in church. Not because the school and the church is inadequate. But you see, it is not their core mission. And that's why we set up NWN. The art of leadership. Financial intelligence. At least that one now, people are beginning to understand. I'm financially free. Somebody will ask me, what does it mean to be financially free? I'm financially free because my passive income can take care of all my expenses. I'm financially free because even as I'm here speaking, my money is working for me that can take care of my needs. And that can only happen when you have financial intelligence. And financial intelligence is not so much of how much it comes in, it's more of how much you are able to set up a system that what is coming in continue to reproduce. So if a man is any 100 million naira and he spends the 100 million, what will be left? If a man is spending five, if a, if a man is earning 5 million naira and he's able to double 2 million of that 5 million, at the end of the day, he's richer than the person who is earning 100 million because he has a system that helps him to make more money. It's a system. It's an intelligence. These are the critical things we need to, to learn. And I always recommend that people get these things before they are 30, 40. Sky, you will blow through the roof. Your success will be non-negotiable. You heard me talk about spiritual intelligence. One thing people fail to realize is that they, they take spirituality very unseriously. Especially we Christians. We are very unserious with our spirituality. The advent of ritual Yahoo Yahoo has shown that there is more to life than logic and what is physical. Has shown that what you cannot achieve physically, you can achieve spiritually. But your age mates who are out there in the occult know that this hustling is not enough. I need to do something extra. And of course, it's only Jesus that gives something for free because he has shed his blood so that our own blood will not be shed again. Every other spirit, for you to get anything, you must shed blood. 
You, the blood of Jesus has actually been shed. It was made poor so that you could become rich. But you have not probed into God deep enough to access the wealth that is available to you. Because that wealth is available to you. You are the one that is lazy. Spiritually lazy to do what needs to be done. To connect with God at that level. He said, I, the Lord, give the power to get wealth. The Jews are the richest people in the world today and you can go back to their history. It is traced to God. It is traced to the covenant they had with God. And when our church boys and girls are not serious with their spirituality, and their colleagues in the occult who know how serious spirituality should be, we end up sacrificing them. People go to church are being sacrificed. How? How can you be a Christian? They can use your blood for sacrifice. How? Never have been one. You have just been coming to church. But today I pray that you will see the need to take your spirituality very seriously. In the days when I used to walk offshore, Wally knows there was a time we had issues on one of the rigs and they said the pipe got stuck. And I was in the control room. I said, I command that pipe. To be freed right now. And everybody started laughing. And I went to the galley to eat. Before I came back, the pipe got free. And when I told them, I said, when I was praying, you people were laughing. Has the pipe not been free now? They said, yeah, it just happened. I said, no, it didn't just happen. Many of us leave the power of God in church. We don't take it out. And the power of God is not supposed to be in the church. The power of God is to be displayed outside. Where, that is where it matters the most. But we come to church on Sunday. As we leave church on Sunday, we drop God. And we live empty, powerless. How can you change your world? How can you make the difference? How can you become what God wants you to become? No way. No way. I don't know the kind of Christians people want to be. They don't want to study. You don't have spiritual intelligence. You are in an organization. You don't know what is going on spiritually in that organization. Let me tell you, every organization has a spiritual dimension. There is a level you can't get to in some organization if you don't enter some cults. You can only be boy-boy level. You can never enter director level. And the only way we can prevail in the kingdom of Babylon is to separate ourselves. The only way Daniel could be relevant in Babylon was to separate himself. Don't eat their food. Don't go to their where they are smooshing and doing all that. Don't follow them to do what is wrong and, in, and, 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 and not pure. Stand to be righteous. Stand to be counted for God. Then God will show up for you. Daniel proposed in his heart. He said, anything that is polluted will not enter my mouth. And when he needed God, God showed up. You all know the story very well. But you read it like a story. You don't translate it to your life. Let me tell you. The world knows those who are theirs. And let me always tell you this. They, 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 no matter how they push you aside, God will create a situation that it's only you that have the solution.